This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, we are sons and daughters of God, and if we neglect speaking the Word of God, then we'll never see what the Word of God can make in our life. Speak the Word of God and watch it make healing. Speak the Word of God and watch it make deliverance. Speak the Word of God and, and watch it make success in your life. Get ready for change. The message of grace is coming to a city near you. Join Creflo Dollar in Los Angeles, California on January 27th and Houston, Texas on February 23rd and 24th. Seating is limited, so register now. Log on to www.creflodollarministries.org to check out the full 2023 Change Experience Tour schedule. Pick up your phone and call the number on your screen or scan the QR code right now to register. See you in your city. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, you love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. I thought that tonight uh, that we would te do a teaching on the power of confession or the ability, the word power is the ability to get results. And I, I believe that when you confess the Word of God, uh, it's like pulling a trigger and releasing a bullet. It's how you release your faith and supernatural things will begin to take place. And when you begin to understand the power that backs confession, uh, I believe that that much faith is available uh, when, when you begin to say that. So I'm going to look at some scriptures. I'm going to share some things with you. I believe that uh, there are reasons, primary reasons, why a confession of God's Word works for you. And we're going to talk about those primary reasons tonight. But I'd like to start in the book of Romans chapter 4 and verse 13. And, and um, you know, pray to that we get a lot done. So this is going to be a really intense teaching session on the power of confession. Let's go ahead and read uh, verse 13 out loud together. He says, for the promise that he should be the heir of the world, he's referring to Abraham and the promise that God made that he would be the heir of the world. He says, it was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but this promise came through the righteousness which we receive by faith. Now look at the same verse in the NLT, in the NLT, because this is so important. You are the righteousness of God. That is your identity. You know who you are, and then we'll begin to show you some things that God's instructed you to do. Verse 13 says, clearly, God's promise to give the whole earth to Abraham and his descendants was not based it was based not on his obedience to God's law, but on the right relationship with God, and that right relationship comes by faith. So he is saying that this right relationship with God, this, this righteousness that you get that comes by faith, it, it is not by obeying the law, but it is by having faith in what Jesus has already done and having faith in what Jesus has made available. Jesus has made me the righteousness of God, and by my faith, I accept that. I receive. I, by faith, I declare I am the righteousness of God. And so we're made right with God through our faith in Jesus Christ and not by the works that we have done. Now, what does that have to do with confession? Well, go to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10 and verse 6 through 8. We'll look at that in those two translations, King James and the NLT. Romans chapter 10 and verse 6 through 8. Now, to me, this is extremely powerful that we begin to understand how this works. Romans 10 verse 6 says, but the righteousness which is of faith. So now that's what he was just talking about, the righteousness which is of faith 
the promise that came not by the law, but by the faith in Jesus Christ, the righteousness which is of faith does what? Speaketh. The righteousness which is of faith does what? Speaketh. Now, that's powerful to me. It speaketh on this wise. I mean, I can stop right there. The righteousness which is of faith speaketh. <clears throat> and he says, he speaks on this wise. Say not in thy heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above, verse 7. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ uh, from the dead, verse 8. But what saith it? The word is not thee, even in your mouth, it's in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Now, a couple of things here with these two scriptures. Number one, your inheritance comes to you through the righteousness which is of faith. We have established that. But secondly, we voice God's Word out of our mouth. That's what the righteousness which is of faith do. We give voice to God's Word out of our mouth. Boy, that's powerful. The fact that we have God's Word and in order for it to activate, and, and I'm just kind of trying to simplify this, in order for it to activate, we give voice to the Word of God. The righteousness that we, we've been made righteous by faith, here's what we do. We give voice to the Word of God. I'm the righteousness of God, and His Word is not be even on my mouth. I give voice to the Word of God. Now go to Psalms 107. And verse 20, so here's what we've established. You've been made righteous by faith. The Word of God is, 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 is nigh thee even in thy heart and in thy mouth. We give, as the righteousness of God, we give voice to God's Word. Now, Psalms 107, verse 20, he says, He sent His Word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. He sent His Word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Now, notice what the Word sent accomplishes. Healing and deliverance from destruction. The Word sent. In other words, when you speak the Word as the righteousness of God, you send the Word and that word accomplishes deliverance from destruction, and it accomplishes healing. Now, think about it. As a Christian, how often do you understand this enough to send the word? How often do you understand this enough to put the word in your mouth, load it up like you would bullets in a gun, pull the trigger, and send the word? Because when you send this word, it will heal and it will deliver from all destructions. Well, why? Look at St. John chapter 1. St. John chapter 1, and then beginning at verse 1. And one of the things you begin to understand here is that he says, yeah, gives us a reason what's backing it, what's the power behind this. He said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Watch this, and the Word was God. So the Word and God are the same. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. So we're not just talking about, you know, just a book. We're talking about the Word of God. God and His Word are the same. You will not be able to separate God from His Word. Now look at verse 3, 1 John uh, 3. He says, all things were made by God or Him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Now, remember, God and his word are the same. Well, how did God make everything? He spoke words. How did God make everything? He spoke words. Let me show you something here. Go to Genesis chapter 1, and, and let's just see God doing this, because if you can get a revelation of how powerful his word is, you'll begin to do it as well. Follow me here. Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, and God said, go on down in the verses, and verse 9, and God said. Verse 11, and God said. Uh, you, you'll see him doing this the whole time. Uh, go down to verse 20, and God said. And uh, then in verse 21, he says, and God created. 
Well, well, notice how God created. He said, he said, he said, he said. Come on, let's keep doing this. Verse 24, and God said. Verse 26, and God said. Verse 29, and God said. And then in verse 31, and God saw everything that he had made. Well, how did he make it? He said it. He said it. And God said, and God said, and God said, and it concluded, and God made. Well, how did God make it when he said it? I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, we are sons and daughters of God, and if we neglect speaking the Word of God, then we'll never see what the Word of God can make in our life. Speak the Word of God and watch it make healing. Speak the Word of God and watch it make deliverance. Speak the Word of God and, and watch it make success in your life. And God said, and God said, and God said, and, and we need to get in, in, in the same position where we're speaking that same thing. Now look at, look at John. Go back to John chapter 1 and uh, look at verse 14. John chapter 1 and verse 14. So in the beginning was the Word, Word was with God, all things were made by Him or the Word. And then verse 14 says, And the Word was made flesh, and it dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. We beheld His glory. We beheld His glory. Or another way to say that, we beheld His manifestation of Jesus the glory of the only begotten of the Father, and he was full of grace and full of truth. So now here's the thing I want to establish here, that most Christians who are defeated in life are defeated because they believe and confess the wrong things. Most, most Christians who are defeated in life are defeated because they believe and they confess the wrong things. And they start off by not believing that confessing the Word of God can make a difference in their life. And so they're defeated because they, they're, they're busy saying all the wrong things because they don't believe that there's authority in giving voice to the Word of God. And so they just, they just keep saying stuff that's, you know, causing the problem. They have spoken the words of the enemy, and those words hold them in bondage. And they don't have any idea what's going on. They keep speaking the words, and they have no idea what's going on. I mean, when, normally when I teach this, some, somebody normally would say, well, are we, are we back to having to watch what we say? I, I'm telling you, this, this is something that as Christian people, if we'll understand the power that's invested in words, you have to understand that when you speak words of the enemy, those words are going to hold you in bondage. So what negative, crazy thing that you find yourself saying all the time? What negative, crazy thing that you are allowing to be, to, to yourself to give voice to? Those are the very things or seeds that are responsible for keeping you in bondage. Look at Proverbs chapter 6 and verses 1 and 2. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 1 and 2. Now, notice he says here, he says, my son, uh, Proverbs 6, verses 1 and 2. My son, if thou will be, will be uh, certain or sure, or if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, he tells you why. Thou art trapped or snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Look at this in the NLT. I mean, he's telling you what the problem is. He says, it's the words of your mouth. And again, like I said, a lot of Christians just ignore this, and they say, oh, that's just basic stuff. No, man, this is for real. In NLT, it says, my child, if you have put up security for a friend's debt or agreed to guarantee the debt uh, of a stranger, verse 2, he says, if you have trapped yourself by your agreement and are caught by what you said, caught by what you said, Words, ladies and gentlemen, words are so very, very important. Hey, write this down. Faith-filled words will put you over, but fear-filled words will defeat you. Once again, faith-filled words will put you over, but fear-filled words will defeat you. So it, words are the most powerful things in the universe, and we have a lot of people in church that don't even know that. 
I mean, uh, the society, they, they have no clue about that. No, nobody even stops to think about that. It's the most powerful thing in the universe. What? Words. In fact, words are responsible for the universe being here. Words are responsible for everything. I just showed you where God said, God said, God said, and then God saw. How did he create and make everything? He said it. He spoke words. And you, you and I have that same God-given authority, authority to speak and give voice to his words and to see what those words will make. Look at Matthew chapter 17, very familiar scripture here. Matthew 17 and verse 20. And um, in verse 20, he said, uh, and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Now, I want to read this first part of the Scripture that got my attention. He said, because of your unbelief, and, and this whole thing was talking about, you remember where Jesus cast out this demon out of this boy and cured, cured him, and the disciples wanted to know how he did it. And uh, Jesus said, well, the reason why you couldn't cast him out was because of your unbelief. But then he said something. He, he says, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say. And I heard the Spirit of God say to me, if you have faith, you should say. If you have faith, you should say. The very thing you say you believe, the very thing you say you have confidence in, he says, if you have faith, you should say. And I thought to myself, like, wow, he just told me how to release it. He just told me how to release the faith that I have. If you have faith, you should say. So somebody says, well, I have faith that I'm healed. Well, you should say. Well, I have faith in all the finished works of Jesus Christ. Well, if you have faith, you should say. Well, I have faith that, that I'm, I'm successful and, and that I'm protected and, and that I have long life. Well, you should say. You see, when you, when you do that, you loose your faith so it can go and begin to, to work for you. You, you. you put your faith in the field, and you don't, let it, you don't let it come off the field until it has accomplished and made what you sent it forth to accomplish. If you have faith, you should say. Boy, that's powerful. And then look at Mark 11, Mark 11, 23. Mark 11, 23, he says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Basically, he says, if you have faith in your heart and you believe it, open your mouth up and you shall have it. In other words, he's talking to us about how we can get involved in creative power. If this is authority that God has given us, that we, what, if we have something in our heart and we believe it and we don't doubt it, and then we open our mouth up and say it, he says, you're going to have what you say. You're going to have what you say. Some might say, oh, but Brother Dollar, I remember hearing that when I was five when I went to church with my grandmama. Hey, yeah, and it was working with your grandmama. It, 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 well, I don't believe that now. And then look at you. And look at things that ha uh, have not been able to come to pass. You've been sitting for 30 years waiting on something to happen. And somebody says, well, Brother Dollar, wait a minute. You know, that sounds like, that sounds like works of the flesh. No, that ain't works of the flesh. That's me cooperating with the authority that I've been given by grace. I have authority by the grace of God. That authority tells me that if you'll, if you'll exercise that authority and you will speak, first of all, if you'll believe it and then you speak it, then you're going to have it. That's my authority. I have authority as a believer to believe it, to speak it, and have it. And I've been given that authority by the, by the grace of God. That authority is a finished work but a lot of Christians don't recognize and don't understand how important it is to exercise that authority. Believe it in your heart, say it with your mouth, you'll have it, you'll see it, you'll possess it because you understand that. So God never does anything without saying it first. I showed you that in Genesis. He never does anything without saying it first. God is a faith God. 
God released his faith in words. God, look at Genesis, uh, uh, excuse me, Hebrews 11, excuse me, another scripture. I'll get it right. Mark 11, 22. Let's look at that scripture. God is a faith God. God is a faith God. He releases his faith in words. And look what he says in Mark, 20, Mark 11, 22. He says, and Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. Or another translation says, have the God kind of faith. God is a faith God. Have the God kind of faith. Now, God is a faith God, and that's my heavenly Father. And I want to be a faith kid, if you will. He's a faith God. We're the children of God. I want to be a faith child. I want to imitate him. And I want to imitate him in that he had something in his heart, he released it with words, and he saw what he made. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1. You see, to imitate God, you must talk like him and act like him. That's so very important. He says, be ye therefore followers of God or imitators of God as dear children. So if we're going to be followers of God and imitators of God, then we talk like him, we act like him. Now, he would not ask you to do something you're not capable of doing. Imitate me, follow me. He wouldn't ask you to do that if you were not capable of doing it. So if he is speaking and out of his heart what he believes, having no doubt in his heart, he's expecting for his children to imitate him, just like Jesus imitated him. Jesus operated in the faith principles of, of Mark chapter 11, 23. He operated in the faith principle of Matthew 17, 20, those two scriptures we just read. Jesus operated that while, like that while he was on the earth, and he's our example to follow. He spoke the word. You remember? He spoke to the wind. He spoke to the sea. He spoke to demons. He spoke to the fig tree. He even spoke to a dead man. Wow. The wind, the sea, the tree, the demons, and even the dead were obedient to what he said. Now, that's authority that Jesus operated on this earth as a man walking on this planet, and, and the Scripture is saying in Ephesians, imitate him. And Jesus began to demonstrate how to walk in that authority, and he spoke to all those things, and all those things lined up, and they obeyed what he said. He operated in the God kind of faith, believing in your heart, saying it with your mouth, seeing it and experiencing it in your life. I tell you, it's a good time to learn how to operate in this authority. It's a good time to learn how to use the, the Word of God and load your mouth with the Word of God and watch it bring some things to pass in your life. Now, Jesus was imitating his Father and getting the same results that his Father got. Man, that's what I believe should happen to every born-again Christian. We should be imitating our Father and getting the same results that Jesus got. But I, that's why I'm teaching this tonight. I think you have to come to a place of gathering some understanding so that you'll know how to operate in this authority. Let, let me give you three points right here I think will help you. First of all, these principles of faith, they are based on, what's this, spiritual laws that you can execute. That's a part of your authority. You have the authority to execute spiritual laws. Uh, when there's a law on the book and you see a policeman in the street hold his hands up, then he has, a, he has authority by that uniform to hold his hands up and, and, and they obey him. Well, we are believers. Praise God. We have the, 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 the authority of Jesus Christ and we have the right to execute spirit law while we're on this physical planet. So that's number one. Number two, they work for who, whosoever will apply these laws. If you don't apply these spiritual laws, you have what you say, speak unto a mountain, death and life are in the power of the tongue. If you don't exercise these spiritual laws, I mean, come on, guy. 
Come on, dude. Come on. You, 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 what are you expecting? You're not exercising spiritual laws, then you're not going to, to see results. And then here's the third point. You get them in motion by the words of your mouth. You get all of these spiritual principles that you have invested in your authority. You get these things working when you, when you load them in your mouth. 